and running on the wall. I forgot to point that out. It's kind of an important thing. When you're, when you're, when you're doing this roller going up, you're, I'm not pushing pressure on that roller. I'm just basically, I'm letting the roller kind of, kind of go along with me. And I'm um, going all the way up as close as I can almost get to the ceiling there. And, and I'm, but I'm not applying pressure on the roller. If you apply pressure on the roller, you start using like a squeegee technique and you start squeezing out and you ruin the life of your roller. So really you let the, you let the paint come off the roller and, and once again, you keep, keep that wet. Don't, don't, don't squeegee all the paint out of there. Exact paint utilization. Use exact same paint color. We do not switch paint colors here. So if you notice that the paint you're putting on is a different color, you need to double check with your supervisor to see if that's the way it's supposed to go. Um, if we are, if we are util utilizing other painting services, which we do, we'll use other contractors, etc. We need to monitor their services. We need to make sure that they follow our paint policies and, and all those contractors should be fully aware of our paint policies because they should have signed, a, signed our paint policy before doing it. And, um, and, and when we do have problems, if we notice that, we need to report those also. Acceptable time allotments, which we talked about. You know, I think we're going to wrap this up in under, under our allotted time, but the supervisor that's overseeing the seeing the, uh, the painting projects needs to make sure that they continually monitor and look at the times and we need to get this, this paint job done in, ex, you know, in an acceptable amount of time which is which is uh, allotted on here. Um, basically in a non-conformative policy anytime we run into problems and stuff we need to uh, we need to notify our supervisor or you know, there may be there may be situations that if we don't follow these these paint policies, you know, we may be stopping back here after work and cleaning this paint off the woodwork on our own time, which we don't like doing that. So obviously, you know, we're paying you to, to, to take care of the problem at the time, and and uh, you know, hopefully hopefully you're doing that. Well, I think we're ready to start cleaning up this area. You know, we tried to keep all our stuff fairly organized here. Got all of our, our stuff on the tarp, and um, it's actually a pretty pretty easy process. Um, put my clipboard out of the way here, and uh, I'm going to start start picking up. Um, and that, these buckets work great for just putting their stuff and getting it out of the way here. And uh, we're going to be using our green scratchy pad and uh, tape and clean up. So all this tape and stuff we can throw right in our plastic bag. And uh, I got a couple of different things as far as um, on mass move, when we have a lot of different departments we're going to be painting with the same color, there may be we may have a number of days in a row that we're going to be utilizing utilizing our, our paint uh, paint equipment. In in a situation where we're going to be using this paint equipment again the next day, I would save your wrapper for your roller. Actually, there's one other thing I forgot to do here. I need to put my covers back on the wall. You should make sure that the wall is nice and dry before you put this cover back on because if you put the, if this is still damp or if it's and whatnot, you should get the whole apartment all painted and then come back and put the cover on and making sure that the, the thing's nice and uh, nice and dry. Otherwise, your, your cover tends to adhere to the wall, which creates more of a problem than a line there. Um, on this particular case, uh, the person before me got a little paint on this cover. So I'm going to use my green scratchy pad and uh, clean that off. Sometimes these covers get real dingy when they're real bad or real dirty. Sometimes they need to be washed in the sink, you know, where actually we scrub them all off and get them all clean. But uh, especially on light switch covers, light switch covers, a lot of dirty hands and stuff get on them and they get real dirty and the switch gets dirty. And so they need a little bit more cleaning. Outlets don't get that dirty, but but just just doing a little quick cleaning, especially like with the green scratchy pad or or my damp my damp cloth that I have around here. You know, clean these babies up so they look nice and good. And here, also, um, also we got a little bit of paint on the, uh, actually we didn't, this is, this is previous, but I know I'm responsible if I leave that paint on that outlet. So I am going to do what it takes to get this off. And digging through my bucket here, here's a good example of where to use my, my uh, my steel, steel, uh, or my brass brush. I'm not going to spray it on the outlet, obviously, but, but I'm going to get uh, get this paint off this outlet here. Good example of where this comes into play. And obviously, when you're working around electrical, you got to kind of 
be careful, but as long as you're not too wet, you're pretty much good to go. There we go. Got that nice and cleaned off. And I'll grab my plate back here and got my nice clean plate. Put it right on the wall. That's why we drop our plates right below the, uh, the area that we pull them out. So I put my screw right back in a the hole there and uh, switch my blade around. Sometimes electrical outlets need to be adjusted. If you notice that your outlet's in too far in, you can back out those screws here so you get the, the surface of the uh, outlet sticking right out where it's supposed to be. So you get a nice area. You should have, you now a good extra thing to carry is a couple of these extra screws because one of the things is you tend to lose them here and there. Even though if you drop them right here and they're right where they're supposed to be, they're easy to put back up and, and those screws are, somehow they tend to disappear. It's a good idea to have extra screws on hand there. So we're moving into our cleanup phase now as far as uh, getting things done and that back my pack. So once again, back into the cleanup here. If we're going to re be reusing this whole roller here, what we want to do is we want to we want to put this roller, we'll put it right back inside the bag here, and we want to tighten this up so it's nice and sealed. Basically, I slide this in here, I grab on the plastic bag, I'll slide that roller right off, and, uh, and I'll seal this up. I'll actually wrap some more plastic around here and tape it up so it doesn't dry out. That's the key thing is making sure the roller doesn't dry out when, uh, when you're, you're saving it. And you can save it for probably up to a week with that, with that paint on it. If not, if we're going to be changing color and we need to utilize this roller, we'll be cleaning the roller out. And then uh, the other, so really making an assessment on how much more we're going to be using this equipment is kind of key to the cleanup process. If we're going to be using this bucket of paint um, in the future, what we're going to do is we're just going to take this and we're going to drop the grid right down in the paint here, and we're going to seal this up. It's going to make a nice airtight storage area for this grate and uh, be, keep that nice and nice and primed for when we're going to use it. If we're not going to be using this paint for quite some time, then we want to clean the grate up, and that's what we're going to show next. So we're going to actually clean up the equipment here and, uh, and go through and, and get ready for another application. I'm going to pull this back out of here and kind of drain this thing down. And uh, we'll show how to do a little bit of cleanup here. So I'm going to brush off all the extra paint that we have on here. It's again keeping this right on my tarp. So my tarp gets the grunt of it. But the key, the key on, uh, here, here's kind of an example of, uh, uh, I know this is a brand new grate, but here's, here's an example of a kind of a stringy thing. If we don't get all the, if we don't get all the, uh, the paint off of uh, um, a grate, the next time we go to use it, we'll get these stringy things, and when they stick to your rollers and they stick to the wall, they're just a bothersome trying to get them cleaned up. In this particular case, we used a, a used paint bucket here, and, um, and I think that stringy thing came off the paint bucket, but it just creates more problems that we don't need when we're, when we're painting an apartment. All right, so I'm getting all my extra paint off of here, and, uh, and actually, this paint can too, a couple of different things. Are we going to be using this again? If we're going to be using this again, we can put the lid right on right on the top of this, label it like we did the top of our bucket so that we have this all set up to go for the next time we need it. Especially like in the forest view here, we're continually painting apartments. We can certainly keep one of these, these cans ready to utilize. And uh, the, kind of the key in utilizing these is when you start getting paint in this little lip that you're kind of getting it out and getting it back into the can. Oh, one, uh, one other thing I want to touch on. On uh, utilizing your paintbrush, as I mentioned, these paintbrushes, we pay anywhere from $15 to $20 for a paintbrush. So we, we buy good, good equipment for you. The key on painting is to always keep a gap here. You don't want this paint to bleed into the bristles of the paintbrush. When you start getting the paint up into the paintbrush head here, it starts creating a lot more problems, and, it, and it's just, it, you start getting drips, you get problems, and, and eventually you're going to ruin your paintbrush because you get that paint up there and you can't get it out and it dries out. So, Many times when you're painting, painting an apartment, and, and uh, when I typically, once or twice, once or twice while I'm painting an apartment, I have to go through and I'll go right over to the sink area, the laundry tub if you have one, 
And I'll actually wash my paintbrush out. Wash my paintbrush out right, right in the middle of my paint job. Because my goal is to keep that paint away from the head of my brush. Otherwise, it just creates problems. So I'll come over to the sink here and, and actually get the, uh, get the paint out of my paintbrush. It just, I like good paintbrushes, and that's one of the main reasons that we make sure that uh, the staff here has good paintbrushes, and, uh, and then you maintain them. So, so you, you, we wash the paint out, and we're actually ready to go. And I'm just going to use my thing here and kind of get all the water out of my paint. Out of my paintbrush there. So I'm ready to go. So I'm ready to uh, continue painting. So, so a lot of times when you're painting an apartment, you do need to stop and paint off your brush. And then uh, the other preventive thing too is when you're when you're rolling, if you do start getting paint on the, on the side of the roller here like it is here, you're going to need to take your rag and just start cleaning it off because you'll start getting drips. It'll start dripping off there if you don't keep this roller side nice and, nice and clean. Okay, we're ready to move on into over to the laundry tub. And the things I'm going to grab there is I'm going to grab my green scratchy pad because that's dynamite for cleaning up stuff. I'm going to grab my dish soap that I have here. And I'm going to undo my uh, pole. So I won't need to bring that into the laundry tub. Put that right away in my bucket. Just got my brass bucket right away there. And uh, I'm just going to use this cover for hauling my all oh, my stuff over there, and, uh, and I'll join you, join you over in the laundry room so we can start to talk western here. Join you over in the laundry room so that we can uh, we can show you how to quick clean up, quick clean up the uh, our painting equipment. Find the laundry room. The laundry room is probably one of the best places to uh, clean up your equipment. You know, the main thing you need to remember is that you got resident managers, you got caretakers here that, that are responsible for cleaning this area. So always be always be conscious of uh, of your, your cleaning and the mess you're making. You need to clean up after yourself. We'll discuss that in the apartment too. Um, really, really, what you need as far as cleaning, it's a pretty simple process: water and soap for cleaning up. I take uh, take my grate. I kind of just dump my grate down in the bottom there because I want to I want to soak that a little bit. I got my rag for cleaning up everything here. I'm plugging up my laundry room. I got my brush. As I mentioned, the brush, uh, the brush you want to make sure that you got, you got it nice and clean. And uh, the best way, kind of using the grate in the bottom here too, to help uh, help clean up. And one thing that you know, this green scratchy pad is a great versatile tool. It cleans up all the paint on your on your side of your brush, not your metal, and uh, you just basically you keep squeezing your brush until you get all the paint off the paint. Basically, you want to use the green stretch bed with the green of the, you don't want to go against it, you want to go with it. You can clean all that up. And really what I do is I just put a shot of dish soap in there. And I want to suds this all up and it cuts the latex tape right out of the brush. Great for getting it out. I kind of work it. Once again, I work my thumbs with that. And I, I, keep, I keep washing this until until I have almost all that paint out of there. And if I could have you grab my cardboard thing for this brush, we'll show you how to properly store it. Once I get this clean, this water is, you know, I get all the paint out of here, which, which I'm sure, you know, really, you want to shake all this paint out of here. And, and it's not, not paint, it's water. It's actually clean water. It's not, not showing anything on my, uh, my blue jeans here. So I got a nice clean brush. It's ready for ready for my next use. And then I'm gonna put this uh, I'm gonna put this right back in the, the paint paint case. Once again, great for storing, great for storing it. Put it right in there, I wrap this thing back up. Especially when those bristles are the, the bristles are wet, they'll tend to form other other shapes. So so maintain your cardboard, hold your hold your brush into shape there. Got my got my grate down in the bottom here, which is kind of soaking. You notice that paint's coming off here pretty good. And I'm gonna let that soak in there a little bit more, actually, a little bit more. Then we got our roller, our roller section here. Basically you just pull that roller right off of there, squeeze the paint on, and once again you need to, these rollers don't last forever. When uh, 
you know, if we just have a one apartment paint, we can we can possibly reuse them again. We usually buy fairly decent quality rollers, and it's just a matter of kind of working the working the paint off of them. But if, these rollers are only good for a couple apartments. Once you start doing two, three apartments, uh, they tend to they tend to wear out. They lose their they lose their life, but. They, they tend to hold a lot of paint, and that's why before you start washing them out, you should try to run them to dry. That's, that's the time you want to squeeze the roller nice and, nice and tight against the wall. Because the roller, you want to get all that paint out of there prior to washing. It makes life a little easier. Once again, and I put a little soap on here. The soap will speed up the process in getting, getting the paint out of here. But they, these rollers do hold quite a bit of paint. It's just a matter of working them through. So you need to assess if you're going to be using this roller, and if not, and a lot of times if we've used it for one or two apartments, and it's not worth trying to revive, revitalize the roller and just chuck it, chuck it, and we'll start over. But yeah, we pay four or five bucks for a roller, and if we can do it, you have to look at the time value of money and the key in this business. So once you use a roller too, you don't want to. Uh, you don't want to let it dry out because you'll start to you'll tend to have other other problems with it. And we use a little more soap, and I'm going to use some clean water on it this time. I'm going to try to get all that so the water water is coming out of there nice and clean. Okay, we got this got this roller pretty good. What we're going to do is we're going to store this roller into an airtight environment so that uh, so it's not going to dry out. So we, we squeegee all this water out of here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to store this into, get all the water out, and we're going to store this into this plastic, plastic bag that we got it in. And even if we're throwing the roller away, it's a good idea to keep these plastic bags. That's you can slide that right over the roller and pull it right off your thing and it's ready for the garbage. But in this case, we're going to wrap some more plastic around it, put some tape on it, and keep that roller nice and moist for the next time we want to use it. And last but not least, two more things we got. We got our roller frame, which we're going to use a great green scratchy pad, and we're going to clean this all up. Get all the paint off of here. And the big important thing is getting the paint out of the ball bearings here. We typically buy, uh, buy rollers with, with ball bearings. We want to make sure that uh, that uh, we get the paint out of there because otherwise you start getting uh, your, your roller doesn't spin. You want nice, nice, nice spinning roller so it doesn't get all gummed up. We get that all cleaned up. We're going to clean the handle all up with our green scratchy pad. And good as new here. Take the water out of that. And last but not least, we got our crate. You notice our grate's been sitting in here for a while, and actually it's doing pretty good. Got almost all the paint off of it. I'm going to get some little lifts in there and get all the paint out of there. Use the green stretch pad to get some of the dry, you know, this paint dries on. The longer you use these things, the more, the more dry paint you get on there. But once again, you want to make sure that you get, Get this crate all cleaned up. These crates only run about two, three bucks a piece, so they're not they're not overly expensive. They're not worth spending a lot of time on, but you know, in this particular case, we really didn't get spend that much time cleaning it all up. I shake off that. So we got our, our grate, we got our paintbrush, we got our roller, we got all this. And I think I think we pretty much did the majority of this stuff in less than uh, way less than 10, 10 minutes, you know, between five and ten minutes. Now, last but not least, as I mentioned, we want to make sure that we do a good clean up here. And uh, you know, part of our part of our job once again is making sure that uh, that we maintain our buildings the best that we can. And uh, what I'm going to do is. Uh, you know, I'm going to do a little clean up on this cup here because I want to make sure that uh, um, you know, even though it's not, not fully my responsibility, but uh, you know, I work as a team here and I want to make sure that uh, you know I leave this place. I don't, you know, rather the managers and stuff don't like when we leave it dirty and I got the equipment here so I might as well just do a quick clean up and, and shine up this uh, 
Kind of some spots that, you know, it looks like some of you, we've got some paint on here from a previous, uh, previous maintenance check, and I'm just going to clean that all up so I don't get blamed for it. Got my sculpture in here, and I'm going to clean this whole, whole area up here. And wash out the tub, and these green scratchy pads work good for a lot of different, different purposes. Well, that's pretty much how you do a quick cleanup. Um, you know, as I mentioned, we'll go back into the apartment here. You know, this is my wet paint side up. We want to make sure that when we fold this, we fold this tarp here. And we got the we got the paint on the inside. We got that ready to go. We got all our equipment. I think we're ready to do the one finest finish uh, finish cleanup in the apartment there, and uh, I think we're ready to move on to another apartment. Well, we're finally in our final stages of wrapping up this apartment. Um, we've uh, been watching our time to make sure that we're staying within a lot of time period here. And um, what we have to do is just do some final, final, um, final pickup and cleanup, and, and we'll be on our way here. So uh, basically, we're going to seal up our paint container here so it's nice and tight and dry. Make sure you get that snap right on there. We got this. Uh, we got this paint bucket properly labeled. You notice that we got uh, got some paint dripping down the edge here. So we're going to use uh, just to make sure. You, know, you put this paint bucket in your car too. You don't want to get any drips in your car. So we got that all cleaned up. Get that squared away. We got uh, we got to put our, our cover on our our can here. So we're going to be utilizing this can for like, some future projects that we got going on. So I'm going to tap this cover down, nice and firm. you got to make sure that that ledge is nice and clean from paint, otherwise you're going to have the paint squirt on. That's something when you clean up with the brush. The other thing I'm going to do is right on here, forest view 5703, got bone white. So the next time we're ready to go, we got this can all ready to go. It's nice and sealed, it's airtight. Take our, take our tarps. Get those folded up. We got the paint side in. Just picking up all our equipment here. Really, if you keep yourself that well organized as you go, it should be a pretty, pretty easy cleanup. Got all that stuff in there. Got our tarps there. One, one of the last important things I want to make sure that I reiterate is cleaning up the apartment. You have to remember that, you know, during mass move, we're going to have cleaners that are coming in behind you. But during, during other periods and other times, you know, one of the responsibilities you have to make sure is, is painting tends to cause a mess in the apartment. And we need to really make sure that we clean up well behind us. And it's kind of knowing the status of the apartment as far as when when people are moving in, when the cleaners are coming in, when the resident managers come in, because, you know, I'll tell you one thing I've learned in this business, resident managers don't like to clean up after the maintenance guys. You know, you got to remember that, that um, if you're spilling, spilling paint on the floor, and big areas are kitchen sinks, you know, making sure that when, uh, I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab my green scratchy pad here, once again, it's a great tool for cleaning up and shining up, so that when we, when we get done here, we make sure that you know, we, got, we got paint drips in here from cleaning out my brush. And uh, I'm going to use a green scratchy pad here to make sure that I get, I get all this paint out of here. And between the paint and you know, possibly some drywall and stuff, I want to make sure that I, I keep this, this whole entire sink area nice and clean. So I'm going to use my, my green scratchy pad and then I'm just going to I'm going to dry this all off here and just wipe it all down. The cleaners are coming in right after me here, so, but once again, I, want, I don't want to raise any concern on who, who left the mess and who did what. Got this, and, and it's a matter of going through. Then my last but not least thing I'm going to do, is I'm just going to do a quick, quick glance at this whole apartment. I want to make sure that I got everything done. Oops, good thing I did that. I forgot, uh, I forgot to piece of tape here. But go through, make sure that you got all your tape done, that you don't have any rungs, 
Now physically look at the wall. See? Here we go. I forgot another piece of tape right here. So we'll look through, look through the walls, make sure that you're all squared away and and uh, that you got any problems. Look for roller bumps, making sure that you got nice uniform coverage on all the all the walls. Get all your outlet plates in play, you got no paint on the woodwork there. Just doing a final check of the whole apartment. Walk through and just physically look at all the areas and make sure everything's intact here. Well, I'm going to be loading this up in the car, and uh, last but not least, what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish up my timesheet. One of the things I forgot to mention is that um, I drove my vehicle here, so uh, so my, my mileage. There's a little area on here that says miles, so I'm going to I'm going to put a big star right there and and. Uh, I already logged them on here, but I just want to make sure that my maintenance coordinator sees those, those miles because we do reimburse, uh, reimburse mileage. And, and so the, uh, the five miles, actually it was three miles that it took to get over here, I'm going to get reimbursed for. Once again, the, uh, you know, I started, I started the time at 10.1. I checked out for lunch from uh, actually from 12.1 to 12.6. And then um, I'm finishing up here and so I'm calculating my time up here, and um, we're checking out here, and I got a total of uh, about six hours total by the time I got my clean up and I got everything done. So I'm right within the criteria that Northern Management set up. Now I got six hours there, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to reflect back. Of that six hours, I'm actually a little bit ahead because I I ended up spending about a half an hour of cleaning cleaning paint off the woodwork in this apartment. So. What I'm going to do, I got six hours here. I'm going to code five hours, actually 5.5 hours. I'm going to code a P for painting, and I'm going to code 0.5 hours for a PT, which means for cleaning the paint off. So of those six hours, I got I got it broken down. You don't need to be exact on on how you break it out. Well, you need to be exact so I get the total six hours, a half for for paint prep or, or getting the the paint off the work. 5.5 for painting about the thing, so it's a total of six hours. Just to make sure that those numbers add up. But I just made a quick assessment how long I thought I took, you know, to clean the clean the paint. I don't need to do 10.1 to 10.3 of taking the paint off. It's just it's a kind of a gradual. When you're done with the project, assess and, and break it down. Just like if you're doing other things, say you're going to do some other, say you're going to work on some caulking or you're going to work on some other other things. You look at the total hours that you're in the apartment. Let's say once again it's six hours, and let's just say um, on another scenario is I got 4.5 hours of, of painting, I got 0.5 hours of prep, I got let's just say I did about a half an hour of caulking, and if I look on my back side of my uh, my single task work order here, caulking it goes under the ca uh, C category, which is carpentry, so I got a half hour of C for caulking. And I had, let's just say, a half an hour drywall repair where I actually had to work on drywall. So you take the six hours, you break it out, so you have a fairly rough assessment. The main reason we do that is for budgeting purposes. We need to know how we're charging out your time to the building, and so we can roll that into the budget purpose. Well, once again, I appreciate you, you hanging in there. And, um, you know, when I pick up all my equipment and walk out of here, I'm going to make sure that this apartment is, is all the top finishes on it. I'm going to have a nice, clean, clean sink, and, and I'm going to make sure that all the little areas that I've done in this apartment are all taken care of. And uh, once again, you know, remember, remember all these skills. Review that painting policy. Walk through yourself. Organize yourself, and uh, keep your keep your buckets. And uh, I appreciate you hanging in there. Bye now.